Hello guys, a big thank you for supporting my channel. You have made me very popular and am grateful. Thanks to the students all over the world, especially Pakistan. India, Bangladesh, Rwanda, Zambia to mention but a few. You have, you have been, been the greatest, greatest fans, fans in my teaching, teaching career. career. Thank, thank you for you always watching my videos, videos giving, giving suggestions, suggestions on, on, asking questions, questions making constructive, constructive criticism, criticism and corrections. And I love you so much and wish you success in your academics. Continue sharing the channel with anyone involved with Cambridge Physics. If you are new to my channel, please consider to subscribe and share and like the video. Hit that like button and bell icon to keep updated. Thank you so much. Hello guys, my name is IBM and today I've decided to record a simple harmonic motion. This is going to be lesson one. Of course, um, I am supposed, I think, to start with oscillations, but I prefer to start with the simple harmonic motion because um, simple harmonic motion um, uses oh it covers it carries more max it is no it is more common than uh, questions about oscillations but of course it's just called oscillations and simple harmonic motion so they want us to talk about simple harmonic motion my students already see simple harmonic motion as the simplest topic in um, in a level paper four so i hope you should also find it as one of the simplest topics in a level paper four so this is a summary of what we expect to, to see about simple harmonic motion. We shall talk about the energy in simple harmonic motion. We shall define simple harmonic motion. We shall explore the terms used. We shall talk about um, how displacement, velocity, and acceleration vary with the time. And finally, we shall talk about how velocity and acceleration vary with the displacement. So if those uh, if those five areas are covered, if those five areas are covered, then we would we, we shall comfortably say that uh, simple harmonic motion has been covered. But before we go into the details of simple harmonic motion, I want to remind you of what we mentioned in circular motion. Now, circular motion, like I mentioned, uh, the concepts of circular motion will actually be very very important or will be very useful uh, in in topics such as simple harmonic motion or oscillations, and in topics such as uh, gravitation, in topics such as magnetic fields, so we cannot really ignore the concepts of simple. I mean, of of, of uh, circular motion. That's why we started with circular motion before simple harmonic motion. So I want you to recall from circular motion, we define the period as the time taken for one complete cycle. Of course, in this unit, we shall always we shall model the co a complete cycle to be an oscillation. So, what is an oscillation? After simple harmonic motion, we shall talk about oscillations in details. But of course, oscillations and vibrations are everywhere. Oscillations and vibrations are everywhere, and an object is said to oscillate if it moves back and forth repeatedly on either side of some equilibrium position or some equilibrium point. So for an oscillation to occur, there should be an equilibrium point as we shall explore in more details. So an object must be moving back and forth, that is to oscillate. 
So an, a complete oscillation will be defined as a complete to and fro. I'm using the term to and fro. A complete to and fro movement. That is back and forth, back and forth. That is what we are going to call an oscillation. So a complete cycle can also be called an oscillation after a complete cycle is equivalent to modeling it as one complete circle, or which is which we call a complete cycle in circular motion. So an oscillation will be defined as a complete to and fro movement of a body about a certain equilibrium position, as we shall see later on after simple harmonic motion. So oscillations occur in many different systems from our uh, from the very small ones such as uh, atoms atoms oscillate to the very large ones such as buildings during an earthquake buildings may oscillate so you might have mentioned or you might have seen so many um, situations where objects are seen to oscillate for example you might have seen a swinging pendulum uh, you might have uh, experienced that the heartbeat the vibrations of the heart or the heartbeat could be also considered to be oscillations. A bird flapping its wings up and down, buildings oscillating during a, an earthquake, all those can be considered to be oscillations. But the time taken for one complete oscillation is what we call the period, which is the time taken for one complete cycle, as we mentioned in circular motion. And of course, the units would still remain seconds for period. But the number of complete oscillations or the number of complete cycles per unit time is going to be called a frequency. The number of complete cycles per unit time or the number of oscillations per second is going to be called uh, the, the frequency. We saw that under circular motion. Also, I want you to remember that our frequency was related to period. Uh, by that expression, frequency is equal to 1 over t, of frequency is equal to the reciprocal of the period, and the units for frequency was the hertz, but because frequency is 1 over period, where period is in seconds, we should also recall that um, hertz is the same as per second. Okay, that is if we are dealing with with the cycles or oscillations, because I remember in... Um, in one of the topics, for example, in nuclear physics, radioactivity, the units for the decay constant was per second, and you can't say the units for the decay constant is hertz, not at all. Even though it is per second, you can't say it is hertz. Because uh, hertz is a unit for frequency to be specific, but it is equivalent to per second. Then the distance from equilibrium position in a specified direction is what we call the displacement. Of course, we know displacement is a vector quantity. It is distance in a specified direction. So that distance from the equilibrium position, of course, we shall define an equilibrium position because an oscillation is a complete to and fro. Uh, let's say this is the equilibrium position. Let's say this is point A and this is point B. For a complete oscillation, the body must move, uh, say, from A, passing equilibrium to B, and then from B, passing equilibrium back to A to make that a complete oscillation. So the displacement would be the distance measured from the equilibrium position to one side, either from O towards A or from O towards B. That is going to be the displacement. That is, distance from equilibrium position in a specified direction as the body oscillates. That is called displacement. But remember, the maximum displacement is called, uh, uh, the maximum displacement is called amplitude, as we saw that in AS. So we may need some of these terms that I've mentioned, the period, the frequency, displacement, and amplitude. And for this particular unit, we shall use the symbol, the letter X for displacement, and we shall use the letter X naught. This is read as X subscript naught or X naught. Uh, we shall use that for uh, amplitude, the maximum displacement from equilibrium position. So if the maximum point is A and the maximum point is B, then the distance from equilibrium to point A is X naught, and the distance from equilibrium to point B is going to be X naught. That is going to be the maximum displacement the farthest we can displace the object from its equilibrium position. That is what we call uh, amplitude.
Okay, so we now need to define what we call simple harmonic motion, having look, mentioned some of the things we need, um, having mentioned some of the things we need to under, or to, to be to be equipped with before we, we drill into simple harmonic motion. So let's now define simple harmonic motion. So simple harmonic motion uh, is one type of vibration in day-to-day -day life. And it is important because all other vibrations are treated as if they are composed of simple harmonic vibrations. It is common, simple harmonic motion is common in our everyday life. And this is because all the vibrations at some point are treated as if they are composed of simple harmonic motion. It is uh, the way in which the accession of a body actually depends on its displacement and is directed towards the equilibrium position. So it's like simple harmonic motion is simply a way in which the accession of a body depends on its displacement. As the body is displaced from equilibrium position, how does the acceleration vary? And this is addressed by what we call a simple harmonic motion. So simple harmonic motion could be any motion that repeats itself, because we said an oscillation is a complete to and fro movement. So any motion that repeats, there is repetition here, any motion that repeats itself, after a certain period of time is going to be known as periodic. So it's like simple harmonic motion is periodic because it is going to repeat itself after a specific period of time, which specific period of time is going to be constant. So any motion which repeats itself after a certain period of time is said to be periodic. And since the motion is going to be represented in terms of sines and cosines, then it is going to be called harmonic. It is kind of sinusoidal. That's why it is called harmonic, because it's represented by sines and cosines. The motion is represented by sines and cosines. It is therefore going to be called harmonic. That's why it is called harmonic, because it can only be represented by cosines and sines. So that's why we call it harmonic. So what is simple harmonic motion? Like I said, um, it's a way of relating uh, acceleration to displacement of a body from its equilibrium position, where the acceleration is always going to be pointing towards the equilibrium position. Therefore, we shall define simple harmonic motion as a periodic motion. Why is it periodic? It's only because it keeps repeating itself. We shall call it periodic because it repeats itself after a specific period of time. So it's a periodic motion of a particle about a fixed point. This fixed point is going to be called the equilibrium position, such that its acceleration, which we shall represent with the letter A, is proportional to its displacement, which we shall represent with the letter X, from the fixed point. And the acceleration is directed towards the fixed point. You could simply define simple harmonic motion as a, kind, a type of motion where the acceleration is directed proportion to the displacement and the two, that is, the acceleration and displacement are always in opposite directions. So to define simple harmonic motion, we have said acceleration in the first place is going to be directed proportion to the displacement. But the acceleration is always directed towards the fixed point, which is equivalent to saying the acceleration and the displacement is, the acceleration and the displacement are always in opposite directions. So that's what we are going to call simple harmonic motion. A periodic motion of a particle about a fixed point such that its acceleration is proportional to the displacement from the fixed point and is directed towards the the, that fixed point. What are we calling the fixed point? The fixed point is going to be the equilibrium point or the equilibrium position. So if this is uh, the uh, this is the line along which oscillations are going to be occurring, and let's say this is the fixed position A, I'll call this point, I mean the fixed position O, and this is the, uh, the, the other extreme end, and this is going to be B. So motion is going to be about this fixed point here. So a body could oscillate moving, say, towards the right-hand side, 
up to the maximum point B where it attains maximum displacement. But if the body moves towards B, the acceleration is going to be in the opposite direction. Because the displacement is to the right-hand side, the acceleration is going to be to the left-hand side because if the acceleration and the displacement are in the same direction, then the body cannot oscillate. Instead, the body will just move in one particular direction forever. But for oscillations to continue, a continuous to and fro movement would mean that the acceleration and the displacement should be in the opposite directions. So this kind of motion is what we call simple harmonic motion. The acceleration and the displacement are always in opposite directions, and I'm saying the motion is periodic. So simple harmonic motion is always going to be defined as a periodic motion of a particle about a fixed point such that its acceleration is proportional to its displacement from the fixed point and is directed towards the fixed point. In other words, the acceleration is directed towards the fixed point. You can simply define it as a type of motion where the acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement and the acceleration is always in opposite, opposite directions to the dip displacement. The acceleration is always in opposite direction to the displacement. So the acceleration and the displacement are always in opposite directions. That's what we, we call simple harmonic motion. So this is a simple de uh, de uh, demonstration of simple harmonic motion to show you what really happens. So if displacement is to the left-hand side, the acceleration is to the right-hand side. And if the displacement is to the right-hand side, the acceleration points to the left-hand side. And notice that in both cases, when the displacement is zero, the acceleration is also zero. And when the displacement is maximum, the acceleration is also maximum, which means which um, which actually agrees with the statement that acceleration and displacement are always in uh, acceleration and displacement are always in uh, opposite directions, and acceleration and displacement are directly proportional. That's what we call simple harmonic motion. Now, the defining equation of simple harmonic motion is going to be A equals to negative omega squared x. This equation is given in the list of formulae. Now, we would write A directly proportion to x, and somebody would suggest that if we remove the proportionality sign, why don't we just introduce a constant, a cosine and any constant? Somebody would suggest that we would, why don't we just say A equals to a constant, say K, times X. But instead, our constant is going to be negative omega squared. Remember for this motion, acceleration and displacement are always in the opposite directions. I think that is easier for us to see the minus. But why is the constant omega squared? We are yet to explore that later on. However, I wanted this animation to define, to help you understand what we mean by simple harmonic motion. The acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement, and the acceleration and displacement are always in opposite directions. I wanted to compare the position A and the position B on this animation here. Position B and position A Maybe just focus at this the, the distance between this point here and where this stops around here. These distances are approximately the same. I think they are the same. And the maximum displacement from equilibrium position is what I said we shall call the amplitude and we shall represent it with the letter X naught. So we have X naught on the right hand side it could be positive. And we shall have x not on the left-hand side, which could say it is negative because they, these are in opposite directions. They're in different direct, opposite directions. So when the displacement is bigger, the acceleration is going to be bigger. When the displacement is smaller, the acceleration is smaller. But the two are always in opposite directions because uh, for the motion to keep repeating itself, the acceleration should be always in the opposite direction to the displacement because if they are in the same dis direction, then the motion cannot be cannot continue repeating itself. It will be just motion in one particular direction. Okay. So mathematically, we write the above equation. 
we shall always write uh, the above equation as acceleration is directly proportional to this i mean acceleration is equal to negative omega squared x we shall just will be representing uh, the definition as acceleration is equal to negative omega squared times x just in case you forget the definition of simple harmonic motion you just check in the list of formula and see this equation here from this equation you can see that acceleration is directly proportional to displacement x and there is a minus which minus we are yet to define but the minus implies that acceleration and displacement are always in opposite directions by stating that acceleration is directly proportional to displacement and the two are always in opposite directions you have defined simple harmonic motion so the const the omega squared is going to be a constant and of course we have already defined this as angular velocity in such a motion omega squared is a constant which is going to be defined as angular velocity just to remind ourselves from circular motion, we saw that omega, which was the angular velocity, was 2 pi over t. And 1 over t is a frequency, so we saw that omega was 2 pi times f. So omega is angular frequency, or angular, uh, I mean it is angular velocity. And Omega is going to be equal to 2 pi f, or it is going to be 2 pi over t, where t is the period and f is the frequency. t is the period that is the time for one complete cycle. And of course, uh, t is going to be the period, time for one cycle, and f is going to be the frequency. Then um, the acceleration, the acceleration is caused by a restoring force. So of course, why do we have an acceleration acting towards the center? Or towards the equilibrium positions because there's a restoring force or a resultant force which always acts uh, towards the equilibrium position and this resultant force is also directly proportion to the displacement so the acceleration that we are talking about here is because there is a restoring force which restoring force is acting towards the equilibrium position and we can't have an acceleration if we don't have a resultant force. So the resultant force, like uh, if you recall, if you if I take you back to this animation, the previous if I take you back to this animation on the previous slide, when the spring stretches to the right hand side, the restore the force there's a force in the string which is the tension that pulls it in that direction. And when the string um compresses to the left hand side there is a force in the spring which pushes it back that force is responsible for the acceleration and of course according to newton's uh, second law the force is equal to m times a that force is responsible for the acceleration and the force and the acceleration are going to be in the same direction and since force is directly proportional to the acceleration and yet we have said the acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement then the force is also going to be directly proportional to the displacement because the force and the acceleration always point in the same direction, then it makes sense to say that also the force and the displacement are always in the opposite direction. Because the acceleration and the displacement are always in the opposite direction. So it makes sense to think about um, it makes sense to think about uh, the force, the restoring force. We shall call it restoring because it tends to bring the body back to equilibrium. It tends to restore equilibrium. So the force, which we are calling the restoring force, always points um, towards the equilibrium position. That is, it points in the opposite direction to the displacement. Because the displacement is always away from equilibrium, that means the restoring force points towards equilibrium. The displacement is always away from equilibrium, the restoring force is, I mean, the acceleration is always towards equilibrium. So the restoring force we are talking about here is also going to be proportional to the displacement after all. Force is equal to mass times acceleration, which means MA is directly proportional to X. That's why we are saying acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement. However, the two are always in opposite directions. Therefore, the force is also always in opposite directions. Before we go into that, let's try to look at the uh, definition of simple harmonic motion equation, which is this one here. You may ask yourself, why is it not just A equals to K times X? 
to remove the proportionality sign and uh, introduce a constant and equal signs. Why do we have omega squared? Of course, it is easier to see why we have a minus, but why do we have omega squared? So let's try to consider that equation in more detail. Why do we have a constant that is squared? Why do we take the constant squared? In other words, when you look at that is this equation here, why is the constant squared? Why is it not just kx? So we take the constant as squared because this will ensure that the constant is always positive. Squaring a number keeps it always keeps uh, the number always the resultant always positive. So we take the constant squared so that it is always positive. The square of a positive or negative number will always be positive. So now we know why it is always squared. But why should we worry about it always being positive? That should be the next question you should ask yourself. Why should we worry about the square being always positive? Because we could say, okay, acceleration is equal to um, negative k squared x. But we are saying we are squaring it because we always want it to be positive. Why should we worry about it always being positive? Why can't, it, why can't we leave it to be negative? It is very common, it is very easy to see that if acceleration is equal to negative k times x, whenever k is negative, it means the negative here is going to be lost. So k should never become negative because as soon as it becomes negative, this negative is going to be lost because we shall have a negative and a negative which will be a positive. So the reason as to why we worry about it always remaining positive is because we don't want to lose this negative because this negative tells us that the acceleration and displacement are always in opposite directions. So we know why we take it to be squared. It's because we want it to always be positive. And now we are saying the reason as to why we should worry about it always being uh, positive, it's because we don't want the minus sign in the equation to be lost. We want the minus sign in the equation a equals to negative omega squared x. We don't want this minus sign to be lost because it has a significance. So this is because the minus sign in the equation must be preserved. It should not be lost. It must be preserved. The reason as to why it should be preserved is because the minus tells us that the acceleration is always in the opposite direction to the displacement. If this minus is lost, it would mean the acceleration and displacement are in the same direction. Remember, if the acceleration and the displacement are in the same direction, we don't have oscillations. We don't have periodic motion. We shall have motion in one straight line in a particular direction. But because we want this motion to keep repeating itself, then the acceleration and displacement must be in opposite directions. And the only way that can be uh, described is by inserting a minus there. So I want you to also recall that acceleration and displacement are both vector quantities. And therefore, if the minus, if the minus were not there, it would imply that the body goes on accelerating and it will never return to the equilibrium position. So if, as soon as we lose that minus, the body will now accelerate in one particular direction and will never return to equilibria. Then we don't have a sinusoidal kind of motion, so it cannot be harmonic. It is not periodic. So we explained why the constant is squared. We want it to always be positive. And we have explained why we mind why we worry about keeping it positive. It's because we don't want to lose this minus. As long as omega is always positive, this minus will never be lost. So that is the defining equation of simple harmonic motion. That is the defining equation of simple harmonic motion. So to fully understand this in more details, let's consider a simple pendulum, for example. The, sing, the swinging pendulum has positive and a positive displacement x and negative velocity. 
So when we displace a, when we displace the pendulum to the uh, right hand side, then this is going to be positive, and of course the velocity is going to be in the opposite direction, which is going to be negative. In fact, the acceleration is going to be in the opposite direction, which is going to be negative. So as uh, the pendulum swings back and forth, its velocity constantly is constantly changing. As it swings from uh, the right to the left, the speed increases because at highest point, uh, the body momentarily stops. So at the highest point here, V becomes zero. V is going to be zero here. That means it gradually increases as the pendulum moves along that path. So it grad V gradually increases and it becomes maximum at the equilibrium position. But of course, uh, as it passes the equilibrium position, it starts moving against the gravity. That means V decreases uh, as X increases. So as X increases towards maximum, V decreases. That means as X decreases towards zero, V increases. So as it swings from right to left, its velocity is negative. Of course, there will be change in direction. It accelerates towards the equilibrium position where velocity increases and then decelerates as it approaches this other end as the velocity decreases. So the velocity increases towards equilibrium and then decreases as it approaches the maximum displacement and the process continues as the velocity keeps changing direction, increasing and decreasing, resulting into a continuous motion that we call simple harmonic motion. So we could say that the velocity has, it has a positive velocity as it swings back from left to right and it will have a negative velocity as it moves from right to left and the process continues. So because velocity is a vector quantity, then direction is going to be important. So again, it has a maximum velocity as it travels through the equilibrium position and this race as it swings up to its static position. So this one can be demonstrated in the class. You can try to demonstrate this with a simple pendulum and notice that it passes the vertical position at a very high speed and its speed decreases and momentarily stops when it reaches the highest point and the process continues. So this pattern of acceleration, deceleration, change in direction, accelerating again, decelerating again, change in direction is what constitutes what we are calling simple harmonic motion. By the way, you might have noticed that velocities, whenever velocity is zero, whenever the velocity is zero, the acceleration is maximum from your concepts of uh, AS physics. At maximum, when velocity is maximum, the acceleration is zero from your concepts of AS physics. When a body reaches a uh, maximum velocity, its acceleration becomes zero. That maximum velocity is what you call the terminal velocity in uh, AS physics. When the velocity reaches zero, when the, when the body momentarily stops, or when the velocity reaches zero, then the acceleration is maximum. Okay, so that is uh, the definition of simple harmonic motion. So in summary, we are saying simple harmonic motion is periodic. Its acceleration, its acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement from the fixed point. Its acceleration is always directed towards a fixed point in the line of motion. In other words, in opposite direction to the displacement. And that's what we are going to return to term as simple harmonic motion. The motion is periodic. Acceleration is directed proportional to displacement. Acceleration is always directed towards uh, uh, fixed uh, fixed point or towards the equilibrium position. Or you could simply say acceleration and displacement are always in opposite directions. And by the way, if you look at that motion, like the previous slide where we used the simple, uh, simple pendulum, it's like when V becomes zero, uh, at the maximum point, kinetic energy is actually zero because it depends on V. But the body has reached the highest point or the maximum displacement. That means potential energy or H is maximum, which means the potential energy is going to be maximum. And when the, when the body passes equilibrium, V becomes maximum at equilibrium position. So it means kinetic energy is going to be maximum 
But remember, it is potential energy which is converted into kinetic energy. And at equilibrium position, H is zero, which means potential energy becomes zero. So in a nutshell, for this simple harmonic motion, we shall still say mechanical energy is conserved. Total energy of the system is always going to be conserved. In other words, it's always going to be kinetic energy plus potential energy is going to remain a constant. We shall see energy of simple harmonic motion later on. Okay. Now, some students may be wondering, how do we arrive at the equation A equals to negative omega squared x as the defining equation for a body performing simple harmonic motion? This is not part of what you expect to do in the exam. You don't expect to define, to derive an expression for simple harmonic motion in an exam. But just for learning purposes and for confidence, for students to gain confidence, I'll try to derive this equation for you. But like I have mentioned, you will not be asked to derive the equation. So let's derive the defining equation of simple harmonic motion. I don't know whether I have enough space here. but I'll try my level best to use this space. So we are going to derive the defining equation of simple harmonic motion, A equals to negative omega squared X, that is acceleration in simple harmonic motion. So let's consider a body, of, a body labeled P are moving in a circular path of radius, say R, with a constant angular velocity, let's call it omega. So let's say the angular velocity of the body is omega and let's say the body is moving uh, clock anti-clockwise as demonstrated by this animation here and let's the perpendicular projection so we are going to project p into onto the horizon, uh, horizontal line as demonstrated by this um, animation here we are projecting p on a horizontal line and if we project p on a horizontal line i want to label this point here and I want to label this point here, and I'll also label this point here. So this is going to be equivalent to A, this is going to be equivalent to O, and this is going to be equivalent to B. So if we project the point P onto a horizontal line, this is what we are having here. The vertical projection or the perpendicular projection of P on a horizontal line, this is perpendicular projection of P on a horizontal line, is going to be a point Q. And what happens to Q as P moves in a circular path? What happens to P? When you look at this animation here, P is the one in red, and Q is the one in blue now. What is happening to Q as P moves in a circular path? You notice that Q moves towards A and B continuously. So we say P, uh, Q is oscillating along a horizontal line. So it's like the perpendicular projection of P oscillates back and forth. It shows or it describes simple harmonic motion. So if we come back to the first diagram, then uh, P, the, uh, P, P's projection onto the horizontal line onto the diameter of the circle is going to be P. And as P moves in this along the circle, Q moves along A or B. Q is moving along the horizontal project, the horizontal line. And R, of course, R is the radius of the circular path, but of course when when Q reaches O, it has been displaced from the I mean when Q reaches A, it has been displaced from the horizontal it has been displaced from the equilibrium position through the maximum distance, which is equivalent to the radius of the circle. So the displacement x is equal to the radius of the circle, and later on we shall say this the displacement is maximum, and that is going to be x naught. So you notice that q moves from zero; its its displacement increases up to b, and its displacement also increases from o up to a. So it's like x, which we said is the displacement, increases from 0 to a maximum value, which is equal to the radius. So if I just draw a right angle triangle here, of course, r being the radius and x being the displacement, then using some concepts of trigonometry, you will notice that x in the first place here, x is going to be equal to 
Oh, if I use, uh, let me just use simple concepts of trigonometry. Uh, X is in the adjacent and Y is in the opposite. R is in the hypotenuse. So I'll use X and R because R is the radius and is known. So I'll say uh, the cos, adjacent hypotenuse, that is cos. So I have that cos of theta is going to be equal to the adjacent x over the hypotenuse, which is r. So it means x is equal to the radius times cos of theta. But I want you to remember, r is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position, which means r is going to be equal to x naught. So later on, we shall say x is therefore going to be equal to x naught cos of theta. Many times you will see this equation listed somewhere in the list of uh, formula for simple harmonic motion. But also it could be sine. If we consider y, y is in the opposite. If I consider y, I would simply say the sine of theta is equal to the opposite, which is y, divided by the hypotenuse, which is r, which means y could be equal to r sine of theta. Therefore, y could be equal to r could be the maximum displacement, which you could call y naught. If, if we call the other an x naught, this could be y naught sine of, of theta. Of course, these two equations are almost the same because y naught will be the same as x naught in the vertical. Therefore, I'm saying in general, x the solution to this equation in general will be 2. Either it will be x equaling to x naught sine theta. We, we, are, we are going to define theta later on. Or it would be x equals to um, x naught cos of theta. What is theta then? So, you recall from a uh, circular motion, we say that um, omega we say that omega angular velocity is the rate of change of angular displacement. So that if the angular displacement is theta, then a rate of change will be theta over t, which means our value of theta is going to be equal to omega times t. Therefore, it makes sense for us to say that x would be equal to, x would be equal to, um, which one should I use? Should I use the one which already has x naught? Okay, x would be equal to x naught cos uh, omega times t, or x is going to be equal to x naught sine omega t. But I've not yet reached there. So, Let's go back to one of these equations. I will use only the one of cos because I said no one will ask you to derive this, so I will not use both of them. I'll use the one of cos. So if we say that x equals to x naught cos omega t, and this is displacement, how do we find acceleration velocity from displacement? I think from mathematics, from your mechanics, Velocity is equal to the derivative of displacement, so this is going to be the x by dt. So I try to differentiate uh, x. Of course, if you differentiate x naught cos omega t, so this is going to be the same as d dt of d dt of x naught cos omega t. And when you try to differentiate x naught cos omega t with respect to t, of course, when you differentiate cos, you get negative sign, and uh, the omega, differentiating omega t remain with omega, so I'll met, I multiply omega with uh, x naught, so it means v becomes negative, uh, it becomes negative x naught times omega, but this is going to be time, when I differentiate cos, I get sine. So this becomes times sine omega t. So that is v. But I'm looking for acceleration, remember. When I, if, I'm, if I want to find acceleration, I differentiate v. So acceleration is equal to dv by dt. 
So in inertia, I'm, I am supposed to differentiate again v the second uh, I get the value expression for v. Remember when I differentiate sine, I get cos positive, not negative. So the acceleration is going to be equal to the negative x naught omega. But then I differentiate sine omega t. Differentiating sine omega t gives me omega cos omega t. If you are doing, if you're not doing math, you may not, you may not really need to to focus on this point of differentiation. For those who do math, this is a simple derivative. This is simple differentiation. So this gives me acceleration as being equal to negative x naught omega squared cos omega t. But remember x was equal to x naught cos omega t. So where I have x naught cos omega t, I know that that is x. So it means acceleration is going to be equal to negative, where there is x naught cos omega t, I'll put there x. So I only remain with omega squared times x. So I have derived that equation. You could do the same with sine. It will give you the same thing. You, all you need to know is how to differentiate sine and cos respectively. So from x equals to x naught cos omega t, I differentiate it to get a velocity. The expression for velocity is um, negative x naught omega sine omega t. Then I differentiated the velocity uh, where I got negative x naught omega. This is a constant, so I differentiated only sine omega t. When I differentiate sine omega t, I get omega cos omega t. So when I combine, I get negative x naught omega squared cos omega t. And this means uh, the acceleration is going to be negative omega squared times x as, as required. So that is the derivative for this. That is how we de derive that equation. So it means these two equations could be written, or you might find them written as x equals x naught sine omega t and x equals x naught cos omega t as we are going to see later on. So we shall basically say that if any motion can obey the equation, if any motion can obey the equation A, if any motion can obey the equation A equals to negative omega squared x, any motion which can obey that equation, then the motion is going to be considered to be simple harmonic. The negative sign on the right hand side is always going to be to mean that the acceleration is directed towards the equilibrium position or the acceleration and the displacement are always in opposite directions. That's what the minus sign is going to mean. So, if it were not to be there, it would imply that the body would go on accelerating and it will never return to the equilibrium position. So suppose we did a first sketch a graph of A against X. Of course, if because acceleration is directly proportional to X, it would therefore tell us that this is going to be a straight line. If acceleration is directly proportional to displacement, it is going to be a straight line because we have even seen that from one of the animations so that when acceleration was zero, displacement was also zero. So the graph goes through the origin a straight line going through the origin. And because displacement can be positive or negative, acceleration can also be positive or negative. So the graph should have both the positive and negative axes. The graph should have the, the negative part and the positive part. And because there is a minus here, if we compare with the y equals to mx plus c, where there is no y-intercept because the graph goes to the origin, we notice that the gradient is going to be negative. So this line must be a negative, a line with a negative gradient. So you should be able, therefore, to sketch a graph of acceleration against the displacement for a body performing simple harmonic motion. So a graph of acceleration against the displacement will take this shape, where the straight line indicates that acceleration is directly proportional to displacement. The gradient of this line should be negative because remember, the acceleration and the displacement are always in opposite directions. The line starts from maximum displacement on one side and maximum displacement on the other side. It also 
has the maximum acceleration is going to be the same on the negative side. So this is going to be negative A naught, and we shall also have a positive A naught. The subscript there is going to be meaning maximum. So the maximum acceleration is also going to be the same on both sides. It should be the same on both sides for a body to be performing simple harmonic motion. So the graph should always take this shape. It should be a straight line through the origin because acceleration is directly proportion displacement, and it should have a negative gradient because the, the negative gradient means that the acceleration and the displacement are always in opposite directions. Therefore, it is a straight line through the origin, which indicates that acceleration is directly proportional to displacement as required by the definition of simple harmonic motion. Number two, it has a negative gradient, which means the acceleration and displacement act in opposite directions. And by the way, remember from Newton's second law, force is equal to mass times acceleration, which means force is directly proportional to the acceleration. And therefore, it implies that the resultant force acting on the body is also proportional to the displacement and acts in opposite direction to the displacement. We shall always be calling this the restoring force, which means if I was to sketch a graph of force against the displacement, if I sketch a graph of force against the displacement, it will be the same shape, a straight line going through the origin. It will be a straight line going through the origin. If it is force against displacement, this is force, against displacement, it should be a straight line going through the origin. And of course, it has the same maximum values. So we shall have positive x naught, I mean negative x naught this side, and positive x naught this side. We will have the same maximum value of f above and below negative f naught and we have positive F naught. So if you sketch a graph of force against displacement, you should have the same shape because according to Newton's second law, the force is directly proportional to the acceleration. So the graph will have the same shape. So I am saying you should be able to sketch a graph of force against uh, displacement and acceleration against displacement. So from this graph, we have seen it is a straight line through the origin which means acceleration is directly proportional to displacement. We have also seen it is a negative gradient, which indicates that acceleration and displacement are always in opposite directions. And we have also seen that from Newton's second law, where force is equal to mass times acceleration, the resultant force is proportional to the displacement too, just like the acceleration. So the graph will always be the same. And I'm saying we shall always call this force the restoring force. So that is acceleration in simple harmonic motion. So let's talk about velocity in simple harmonic motion. So for velocity, so for velocity, we are going to consider the same motion. We are going to consider the same uh, motion that we considered for acceleration. So we are going to consider, uh, we are going to model as, uh, we are going to model the simple harmonic motion as a complete cycle, which we can model into a simple such lab shape like this one because it's one complete cycle just like we considered uh, for oscillations we shall consider the vertical the perpendicular projection of we shall consider the perpendicular projection of p onto the onto the horizontal line through the origin through the origin as we saw for circular motion and i mean as we saw for acceleration and i'll pull out i'll just pick out one triangle from this I'll just pick out a triangle from this. So if I pick out this triangle, you notice that, uh, remember this is going to be equal to, uh, this is going to be equal to X naught. Let me pick a pen here. At maximum displacement, R is equal to X naught, where X naught was um, the maximum displacement, which is the amplitude, which we shall call the amplitude later on. So if I pick out the triangle here, this is going to be uh, by Pythagoras theorem, x squared plus x naught squared is, I mean, x squared plus y squared is equal to x naught squared. So it's making y the subject, y is going to be the square root 
of x naught squared minus x squared. So remember sine of theta. Remember theta was omega over t. I mean, yes, theta was omega t. So theta sine theta is equal to the square root of x naught squared. That is the opposite minus x squared. Opposite of a hypotenuse, which hypotenuse was the radius, which is maximum displacement, x naught. That is sine theta. And remember from one of the equations that we, we saw, if x is equal to x naught uh, cos omega t, we derived, we differentiated this, and we got the x by dt as negative. I think it was negative... Um, V was equal to negative omega x naught sine omega t. I think it was negative omega x naught sine omega t. That was, I think that was, that was V. Negative omega x naught times sine omega t. And if V equals to negative omega x naught sine omega t, and yet, and yet a uh, sine sine theta. Remember, theta was omega times t because omega is the rate of omega itself was theta over t, where th omega was the rate of change of angular displacement. So it means V is going to be negative omega x naught, where there is sine. I just put square root of x naught squared minus x squared, then divide this by x naught. And it means x naught cancels out. But remember the square root of a number the square root of a number can be positive or negative. So instead of writing v equals to negative um, negative of omega into the square root of x naught squared minus x squared, I would simply say, or I can say v is equal to positive or negative square root, I mean omega square root of x naught squared minus x squared, because the square root of the number can be positive or negative. So I expect v to be either positive or negative, since the square root of a number can be always can be positive or can result in a positive and a negative value. So it means It means um, V could be just quoted as plus or minus, uh, neg uh, plus or minus omega root of x naught squared minus x squared. Again, if you're not a math student, you will not be asked to derive this equation. After all, this equation is even quoted sometime. I think it is quoted in the list of uh, the list of formula. It is quoted in the list of formula. So your task will be just to be able to use it. So. In general, the velocity for a body performing simple harmonic motion is given by this expression here, where v is equal to plus or minus square root of x naught squared minus x squared. I used the, uh, the, 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 uh, the differentiation to arrive at that expression. So, what happens when v when x is x is zero? The body is passing equilibrium when x equals to zero. The body will be passing equilibrium. So it means when I put here a zero, when I put there a zero, uh, where there is x, I put there zero. You would notice that in that case, if I put there a zero, v would be equal to omega square root of x naught squared because x is zero, which gives me v as equal to omega times x naught. And by the way, the velocity is maximum when the body is passing equilibrium. V is maximum when the body is passing equilibrium position or it is passing the fixed position. So it means this velocity that I obtain here, which is V equals to omega times X naught is going to be maximum. Normally for maximum values, we put a subscript. So that's why you see I have put here V naught. So when the body is passing equilibrium, the displacement is zero. When we make x to be zero, v becomes omega x naught, and that velocity is going to be the maximum velocity. 
How about if the body is just at maximum displacement? In other words, x is the same as x naught. So when I put here x naught, what happens? So it means v is going to be called omega square root of x naught squared minus. Where there is x, I'm putting x naught, but squared. So in this case, we notice that v becomes 0. So when the body is at maximum displacement, velocity becomes 0. When the body is at maximum displacement, velocity is 0. So velocity is 0 when x is equal to x naught. That is, at the point of maximum displacement, where the particle is momentarily at rest. Before changing direction, the, the particle will be momentarily at rest. So v is going to be equal to 0 when the body reaches maximum displacement. V is going to be 0 when the body reaches maximum displacement. Okay. So, in a nutshell, we are saying A, or the acceleration is 0 at the center of oscillation. That is obvious because acceleration is directly proportional to displacement. When X is 0, acceleration is 0. Then the acceleration is going to be maximum when x equals to x naught, that is at maximum displacement, because acceleration is depending on x. When acceleration is maximum, I mean when displacement is maximum, the acceleration is maximum. So maximum acceleration is going to be given by a naught equals to negative omega squared x naught. Many times in the calculation, we shall ignore the negative, and you will see us write acceleration a naught as simply being equal to omega squared times x naught. It doesn't mean we have forgotten that acceleration and displacement are always in opposite directions, not at all. But in calculation, we shall just consider the magnitude. I want you to also notice that there is a relationship. There is a relationship between acceleration equals to omega squared x naught. Of course, we have seen a, simple, a similar equation in circular motion uh, that was said to put acceleration. After all, this is always... Uh, we are modeling this to be uh, in a, as a complete cycle to be a circle. But I want you to see that there is a relationship between this expression here and the expression for velocity. And what is that relationship? When I combine the two expressions for velocity and uh, omega squared x naught, you'll notice that acceleration, maximum acceleration, is going to be equal to omega times v naught. Because V naught alone is omega X naught, so acceleration can also be given as omega times V naught times the maximum velocity. Maximum acceleration can be given as omega times the maximum velocity. Now you should be asking yourself, how shall we sketch a graph of velocity against the displacement? So we just use simple mathematics to come up with that, um, that graph. We are going to sketch the equation v equals to plus or minus omega square root of x naught squared minus x squared. So let's let's look at the graph of velocity against displacement for a body in a simple harmonic motion. We shall not forget the equation that we have just arrived at as v equals to plus or minus uh, the square root of um, x naught squared minus x squared. If you're mathematics, if you're a math student. You can sketch this graph even without being told. You are just sketching that equation and seeing what happens. So I'll try to sketch it here first. So I'll draw, because velocity is a vector quantity and displacement is a vector quantity, so I'll need the positive and negative parts of this graph. So remember, uh, displacement ranges from 0 to maximum on one side. So let's have a positive x naught. The maximum is x naught. Then from 0 to negative side, negative x naught. These ones are equal in magnitude. Then if velocity displacement varies from maximum, from zero to maximum on both sides, it also means velocity varies from zero to maximum on either side. So we shall have maximum velocity somewhere. I'll call this one p v naught and maximum velocity below, which I'll call uh, plus, I mean negative v naught. So we are just going to sketch this equation here. What is the value of v when x equals to 0? So when x equals to 0, v we said is equal to v naught. It is going to be omega times x naught. It is maximum. 
So it, remember the square root is positive or negative. So this is going to be plus or minus. So when x equals to 0, uh, v is going to be positive or negative v naught. So we have two points here. 0 positive v naught, 0 negative v naught. Then what happens when x equals to x naught? We know that when x, I mean when x equals to maximum displacement, v is equal to 0. Whether it is positive or negative, because it is squared, v is going to be 0. So when x equals to positive v x naught, v is 0. And when x equals to negative v naught, v is going to be 0. When x equals to negative x naught, v is going to be 0. So what is the shape of this graph? We see that we have something like an oval shape. So if I sketch this graph, this is going to be something like oval. It is going to be something oval. So in, in actual, what I'm saying is that a graph of velocity against displacement is going to be an oval shape. It's going to be an oval shape. We just uh, sketch this equation here using the conditions. When x equals to zero, that is when the body is passing equilibrium, velocity is maximum. And when x equals to positive or negative, that is when the body is at maximum displacement, velocity goes to zero. So the graph is going to be of that shape. The graph is going to take that shape. So a graph of velocity against displacement is going to take that shape. You must be able to, uh, you must, you should be able, and you should always be able to sketch that graph in an exam. Even though in an exam, you may not sketch a general graph, but instead sketch a graph with the values given, you should be able to sketch uh, such a graph in an exam. Okay. Let's now talk about uh, the graphs of this. We have been talking about uh, acceleration against displacement, which are easy graphs. Velocity against displacement, which is very easy. Now let's try to talk about uh, these quantities against displace against time. For example, let's start with a graph of uh, displacement against time. So a graph of this. Let's consider a graph of displacement against time. Remember the defining equation of simple harmonic motion was acceleration is equal to negative omega squared times x. We were able to derive this equation from either x equals to x naught sine omega t or x equals to x naught cos omega t. Now you should start asking yourself when is the equation considered to be sine and when is the equation considered to be cos? These two are considered to be solutions to this equation if you're a mathematician who has done a differentiation and uh, integration. These two, x equals to x naught sine omega t and x equals to x naught cos omega t are considered to be solutions to this uh, differential equation, a equals negative omega squared x. Of course, to arrive at them, you should either take uh, separate variables and so on and so forth. So when do we consider the solution to be sine and when do we consider the solution to be cos? Which of these two values give you x as 0 at t equals to 0? And which of these two give you x as x naught when t equals to 0? So when I say t equals to 0 is when we start the stopwatch. Before you press the, the start button of a stopwatch to start timing your oscillations or your motion, the initial value of t is zero. We notice that here when t is zero, x is going to be zero because sine of zero is zero. But we notice here that at when t is equal to zero, x is going to be equal to x naught, where x naught, remember, was the maximum displacement. So it's like if we press our we start our timing when the body is passing equilibrium, the solution is going to be sine because at equilibrium, x is zero. If we start our stopwatch at t equals to zero when the body is at maximum displacement, the solution to the equation is going to be cos. So those two conditions are very important, even in calculations. If timing starts when the body is passing equilibrium, the solution to this equation is going to be sine. If timing starts when the body is at maximum displacement, the solution to this equation here is going to be cos. So those two conditions are very important, even in calculation. So if x, 
x is equal to x naught sine omega t if at t equals to zero the particle is at its equilibrium position that is where x is equal to zero and we shall use x equals to x naught cos omega t if at t equals to zero the particle is at its maximum displacement that is x equals to x naught so the examiner will tell you that timing starts when the body is at maximum displacement. In your mind, you know that this is cos, because it is cos of zero which gives you one, so that x is equal to x naught. And if timing starts when the body is passing equilibrium, you know that it is sine which gives you zero, because at equilibrium, displacement is zero. So what you need is now to sketch these two graphs. Of course, for simplicity, you can divide the motion into um, into values of, uh, of course, you know how to sketch a sine curve at this point. If you don't know how to sketch a sine curve, you can just sketch the equation x equals to x naught sine omega t. Just put in a few values and see how it, it behaves. So we start with zero. I will say this line, I will say this is the, uh, I will draw this as the reference line for maximum displacement on both sides. So the graph for the sine is going to start from here because at t equals to zero, uh, sine of zero is zero. Then I will divide the motion into, into, um, into quarters. So t equals to a quarter of a cycle, a quarter of a period. Remember, Omega is 2 pi over t. So when I say a quarter of a period, it means, of course, t is equal to 2 pi over omega. So when I say a quarter of a period, I'm referring to uh, pi because t is 2 pi over 4. I mean, t is 2 pi over omega. So this is going to be pi over omega not pi over omega, pi over twice omega. So when I try to find sine, sine of omega times pi over twice omega is the same as finding sine of pi over 2. I think sine pi over 2 is the same as sine of 90, which is, which is 1 and is positive. So I will say that uh, a quarter of a period is going to be maximum. Of course, you go on using half a period. It is going to be half a cycle. That one goes to sine of 180, which is 0. Then uh, three quarters is going to be sine of uh, 270, which is going to be negative, negative 1. So this goes to negative 1, which goes at the bottom. Then we go back to sine of 360, so it is going to be a sine curve like this. So you can also uh, sketch cos, the cosine curve. Of course, these graphs are not commonly sketched in the exams, but you should be able to substitute values to sketch this. If this is hard to sketch, you can use a simple pendulum. Because for a simple pendulum, if we, if we say that uh, timing starts when the body is passing equilibrium. We know that at a quarter cycle, the body reaches maximum displacement. At half a cycle, the body comes back to equilibrium. Three quarters, the body reaches maximum displacement on the opposed side. A full cycle, the body comes back to equilibrium, but in the opposite direction. That is for a simple pendulum. So I can use a simple pendulum to easily sketch this graph without even wasting time. If you're a teacher, you can uh, have a pendulum in your class as you're sketching this graph, but it's always better to leave it for the students to sketch. So for sine curve, we are still starting from here, passing equilibrium. A quarter cycle, we move from here to the other end. That is a quarter cycle. That is at maximum displacement. So this will be at maximum displacement, which is going to be say positive x naught. Then half a cycle, we come back to equilibrium, that is half a cycle, where x is zero. Then three quarters, we go to the other side of at maximum displacement, but on the opposite side. So this goes to negative x naught. 
Then if a full cycle, we come back to this to equilibrium position in the opposite direction. So this comes back to zero. So the cycle continues like that. We can do the same for the cosine curve. This time using, um, so this is sine. This is x equals to x not sine. I will sketch on the same graph for cos, but I will use a different curve. So for cos, timing starts when the body is at maximum displacement. So our graph starts at, at t equals to, so the body should be at maximum displacement. So if we start from maximum displacement, uh, let's say moving towards equilibrium. So we start at maximum displacement and move towards equilibrium. That at a quarter cycle we're in equilibrium. So that means our graph goes to zero. I mean at a quarter cycle our graph goes to zero. Then at half a cycle we continue the other side to maximum displacement. So at a half a cycle we are at maximum displacement. Then again three quarters we are coming back to equilibrium. So three quarters we are coming back to equilibrium. So three quarters, we are here at equilibrium. Then a full cycle, we go back to where we started from. So full cycle, we are now at maximum displacement. So our graph is going to be something like this. And it will continue like that. So you notice that uh, these two graphs are going to be a quarter, a cycle out of phase. They're going to be 180 degrees, is it 180 degrees? No, 90 degrees out of phase. So the sine curve and the cosine curve are going to be a slightly out of phase. They are going to be a quarter a cycle apart because this is a half a cycle. In the middle here we have three quarters. And here we have a period. So these two graphs are going to be um they are going to be a quarter a cycle apart. So they are going to be a quarter a cycle out of phase as demonstrated by that. Okay, so the graphs essentially look like this. Let me just give standard graphs. So the graph of um, the graph of sine is essentially going to look like that. Of course, here we have a quarter of a cycle, which is going to be pi over two. This is going to be pi over over two omega. This is three quarters of a cycle. This is a full cycle, which full cycle is a period which is two pi over omega. Then this is going to be a, a continuation. You go on adding a quarter. So this is pi over omega, I mean to omega, pi over omega, you just go on adding a quarter of, uh, or you, you add pi over two. So this becomes pi, pi over omega plus, so this is over two, what is that, pi over omega plus, pi over 2 omega, LCM is 2 omega, so this becomes 2 pi plus pi, so that becomes 3 pi over 2 omega, so this is 3 pi over 2 omega, and so on and so forth. But we can just replace this with a quarter cycle, half a cycle, three quarters, and so on and so forth. So that would be for the cos for the sine curve. The sine curve of course starts from zero. And then for the cosine curve, it starts from a maximum displacement. And in an exam, of course, you may not use uh, omega in your plotting, but the examiner will give you values that you just put in your calculator and see. But essentially the graphs will look, will look the same, the same shape. The, the cosine curve and, and the sine curve, they will look the same. And I say the easiest way to sketch this is by considering a simple pendulum. You'll be able to sketch. Where in your mind, you know that I will start at equals to zero when the body is at equilibrium for sine. And I will start at equals to maximum displacement when the body is at maximum displacement. 
at equal to when the body is at maximum displacement, that would be the cosine curve. So you just consider a simple pendulum and sketch these graphs very, very easily. Okay, so that is going, those are the graphs for simple harmonic motion. A few things I want people to realize from these graphs. Just a few of a few things I want people to realize. We recall from AS kinematics that the gradient of a displacement time graph is the velocity. The gradient of a velocity time graph is the velocity. We recall that from AS physics. The gradient of a velocity time graph is the velocity. I mean, the gradient of a displacement time graph is the velocity. And we notice that at the peaks of these graphs, the gradient is going to be tangent, which is horizontal. So at the peaks, the gradient is always zero. That's why we said when displacement is maximum, velocity is zero at when the displacement is maximum. It also means the gradient is maximum when the body is passing equilibrium. So at these points here, where the body is, where the graph crosses the x-axis, the gradient is maximum. So the velocity is maximum when the body is just passing equilibrium. But I want you to also note that the gradient for this part, for example, is, is negative. Yet the gradient for this part is positive. So it's like this velocity is opposed to the other one. So at this point, the body is moving in one direction. At the other point, the body is moving in the opposite direction. So the velocity are equal in magnitude and maximum for both. But at this point, the velocity is going to be in one direction. The other one, the velocity is in the opposite direction. So, velocity is positive. It could be considered negative here and positive here because the body would have changed a direction. Okay, I'll talk about that later on. So, to understand the solutions, I came up with a simpler analogy here. If timing starts when the body is passing through the rest position, that is equilibrium, the displacement at any time is always going to be given as x equals x naught sine omega t. You should recall that every time. And when timing starts, when the object is just at maximum displacement, that is the body is at the highest displacement, the equation which gives us x equals to x naught when t is zero is the one of cos. So you should be able to know when to use cos and when to use sine. Lastly, someone may be wondering how about uh, the velocity time graph? Okay, before we look at the velocity time graph, let's go through a few notes. Number one, recall that the gradient of a displacement time graph may be used as a velocity, that one I've already mentioned. The gradient may be used as the velocity. And when x is maximum, the gradient was zero for both solutions, whether it is sine or it is cos, which means whenever the displacement is maximum, the velocity is zero because the gradient of those graphs at the peaks is zero. And number two, I also mentioned that when uh, the gradient is maximum at the displacement of zero. From the above graphs, we observe that the gradient is at maximum when x is zero, which implies that whenever the, the body is passing equilibrium, whenever the body is passing equilibrium, the velocity is going to be maximum. Because the gradient is maximum when um, the gradient is maximum whenever the displacement was zero. So you should note that very, very carefully. So the graphs of velocity against time are going to be just um, derived from the graphs of displacement against time. Remember, we saw that our velocity could be derived from displacement towards dx by dt. So if we derived, we could get, uh, say, omega x naught cos omega t, if I use uh, the one of sine, or the velocity could also be omega x naught, there is a minus, then there is sine omega t. These are the two equations for velocity. You don't need to remember them. But a good math student can really um, recall these graphs. So... 
it means the graphs will just take the simple shapes. So uh, when I have v equals to omega x naught cos omega, it means that x was equal to x naught sine omega t. So from x equals to x naught sine omega t, when I differentiate, I get v equals to omega x naught cos omega t. So the graph will be just the opposite of the one of sine. Then when I have uh, v equals negative omega x naught sine omega, it means x was equal to x naught cos omega t, and the graph will just be the opposite. So the graph of v equals negative omega x naught sine omega t, this is when x was equal to x naught cos omega t, because when I differentiate this, I get this. So when I sketch the graph of this, I'm most likely going to get something like this. You can even check when x, I mean at t equals to zero, when t is zero, v is zero. So the graph starts from the x, from the origin here. And when t equals to a quarter of a cycle, when t equals to a quarter of a cycle, sine of 90 is one, so you get negative v naught. That's why the graph goes at the bottom, because sine of 90 is going to be 1. This is at a quarter of a period. And then when v equals to half a cycle, sine of 180 is going to be 0. So the graph comes back there, and the process continues. So the graph of v against t would take the shape. Do not confuse the graph of v against um displacement with the v against t. The graphs of velocity with the time are not very common, but the graph of velocity with displacement will always be very common in most of uh, the solved past paper questions that you can find in the, the videos. Okay, so observe that from v equals to, nega, uh, to omega x naught cos omega t when t equals to zero, velocity is maximum, that is, i.e. V, v naught is equal to negative omega naught. Omega x naught at t equals to zero. So for this one, because it's a cos, when t equals to zero, v is equal to uh, omega x naught, which is actually maximum velocity. Now I'm giving an assignment. You can try to sketch a graph of acceleration against time for the above equations. I want you to also note before we go any further, remember that from the velocity time graph, we could find acceleration as the gradient. Acceleration is the gradient. That means whenever velocity is maximum, the gradient is max is the gradient is zero. For example, at this peak here, at this point here, at this point here, at this point here, the velocity is maximum, the gradient is zero. So whenever it means whenever v is maximum at v maximum, acceleration is going to be zero. And you notice that the gradient is maximum when the graph is passing through equilibrium. So it means when at v equals to zero, acceleration is going to be a naught maximum because the gradient is maximum when the graph crosses the x-axis, that is when v equals to zero. But I also want you to notice that the gradient of this part, for example, is negative, yet the gradient of this part here is positive. So it means this, this acceleration is not in the same direction as this one, they're in opposite directions. So you should note that very, very carefully. So as an assignment, you can try to sketch uh, acceleration time graphs. And if you are my student and watching this, make sure you present your graph to me in class. Okay. So however, to give you a hint, you can use the expression for uh, acceleration. For example, I differentiate this. When I differentiate this, I get acceleration. For example, here acceleration is going to be the derivative of this is going to be negative. Uh, omega will be squared x naught sine omega t. Remember, omega squared x naught is maximum acceleration. When I differentiate this to get an expression for acceleration, acceleration is going to be equal to uh, the negative is a minus here. When I differentiate sine, I get a positive cos, so the minus will remain. So it will be minus omega squared x naught cos 
omega t. So you are actually literally sketching this graph equation here and this equation here. And I said you can use a simple pendulum for simplicity, but whenever you use a simple pendulum, when the displacement is maximum, the acceleration is going to be maximum. And when the displacement is zero, the max acceleration is going to be zero. So if you think about that when you are sketching the graph. Okay. So having explored the basic principles behind our uh, oscillation, simple harmonic motion, then for the introduction part, we should be able to do a few examples because those are the basic principles. So we can do a few examples. Example number one, um, a particle is moving, a particle is moving uh, with a simple harmonic motion of period eight seconds. So the period is eight seconds and amplitude five meters. So the period is eight seconds, the amplitude is five meters. So this is going to be T and this is going to be X naught, maximum displacement. Find the speed of the particle when it is uh, three meters from the center of its motion. So this is going to be X just. So since uh, in the equations for speed and acceleration we have that um, we have omega, it should therefore be uh, obvious that we shall need omega in our calculations because we know that period capital T is equal to, or oh, we know that omega is two pi over T, so T is two pi over omega. So we shall need omega in my calculation. I will need omega. So I'll simply say period is equal to 2 pi over omega and it implies that um, it implies that omega is going to be 2 pi divided by omega is 2 pi divided by the period which is 8.0 and this is going to be can I leave it as, what is this with my calculator? So the period is 0 0.785. This is radians per second. That is the period. But we want to find V from the expression for speed. Uh, there is an, an acceleration, there is omega. So for the first equation, first part of the equation, V is going to be equal to uh, plus or minus omega square root of X naught squared minus X squared. I say this equation is always given. So this is going to be omega is 0 0.785 square root of X naught is given as 5 squared and X is given as 3 and T squared. So I'll just press my calculator. So this is 25 minus 9, 16, that is 4 times that. I think this is just pi. So this is going to be plus or minus 3.14 meters per second. So it can be plus or minus 3.14 meters per second. Of course, many times we just ignore the signs. Then the maximum speed of the particles. Remember, maximum speed is attained when um, displacement equals to zero when x equals to zero so at maximum speed that is roman 2 x should be equal to zero which means v maximum is going to be omega times x naught so i just substitute in this one this will be 0 0.785 times x naught which is five and from my calculator this is three 0.93 meters per second. Then Roman 3 is maximum acceleration. Remember, acceleration is directly proportional to displacement, so it means acceleration is maximum when displacement is maximum. So it means maximum acceleration is going to be the magnitude of negative omega squared x naught. So I'll just ignore the negative, so this would be 0 0.785 squared times x naught, which is 
and this gives me 3.08 meters per second so that is the maximum acceleration okay example number two example number two the figure below shows the displacement time graph for an oscillating mass. Use, use the graph to determine the following. So I think this is a very easy equation. Uh, use the graph to determine the following. Number one is the amplitude. We just look here. The amplitude is going to be 2, I think. 0 0.2. So this is 0 0.2. 0 meters. Then period time for one cycle, one cycle stops here. The period is 0 0.4 meters. Then uh, three is a frequency. Frequency is one over the period. So we just get the reciprocal. Frequency is one over the period. So we shall just get the reciprocal. So I get the reciprocal of one over T. So it is 1 over 0. So this was period 0 0.4 seconds. So this is 1 over 0 0.4. And what is 1 over 0 0.4? Let me check my calculator. Okay, 1 over 0 0.4. So this is going to be 2.5 hertz. Then angular frequency, of course, we know that omega is equal to 2 pi um, times f. Omega is 2 pi times f or 2 pi over t. So since I've already found the period and the frequency, I'll just multiply this by 2 pi. So this is 15.7 radians per second. Then displacement at A. So displacement at A, of course, you just look at the graph here. I think it is approximately negative one point, negative 0 0.10 meters. It is negative. Then velocity at B, at B without calculation, velocity at B, because that is maximum displacement, velocity at B is zero. Then velocity at C, at B it is zero because that is maximum displacement. At C, then I have to find a gradient. So what you do, you draw a tangent, at, which goes through C. You draw a tangent and find uh, this gradient. So let me try to estimate these values and I see what I can get. So zero point zero nine. So I'm trying to find a tangent, the gradient to find a tangent. For those who have my my tutorials, you can do this on your question paper. You try to find you draw a tangent at that point. You remember tangent is a well balanced line which goes through the point. It should not enter into the curve beyond the curve, it should be just touching. So I find a gradient of that curve and so I divide this. And this is giving me approximately 3.1. So this is approximately 3.1 meters per second. You can try to find a gradient. Your answer will be very close to 3.1. So that's how we use this graph. We know how to find the amplitude is the maximum displacement. Period is the time for one cycle and one cycle stops at 0 0.4. Frequency is one over period. Angular frequency is 2 pi over t or 2 pi f. The displacement at A is negative. We just look at the graph, negative 0 0.1. The velocity at B is zero because this is maximum displacement. At maximum displacement, velocity is zero. Then our velocity at C is the gradient. So we find a gradient at that point. We can find a gradient at that point. Alternatively, if we notice, if we know that V is equal to omega times X naught, because at when X is equal to zero, 
the loss is maximum. So this could be omega, which we have as um, 17, I mean 15.7 times maximum displacement, which is 0 0.20, which by calculation, 15.7 times 0 0.2, this is 3.14 meters per second. So we could use, we know that at C, x equals to zero. So v is equal to maximum, as simple as that. Okay, example three, uh, the displacement x at time t of a particle moving with simple harmonic motion is given by that, e uh, by that equation, x equals to 0 0.25 cos of 7.5 t, where x is in meters and t is in seconds. Use the equation to find the amplitude, frequency, and period uh, for the motion. Then find the displacement at, at x. Find the displacement when t equals to uh, 0 0.5. So, so um, I'll simply compare the equation x equals to 0 0.25 cos 7.5 t with x equals to x naught cos of omega t. So I want to find amplitude, frequency, and period. So it means comparing the two equations, uh, omega is equal to 7.5, omega is 7.5 radians per second, uh, and I have x naught, which is the amplitude, is going to be equal to 0 0.25 in meters. So I now have the amplitude. I want to find the frequency. I know that omega is equal to 2 pi times f, which means uh, the frequency f is going to be 2 pi divided by omega, which is 7.5. So this is going to be, no, it is omega. It is omega divided by 2 pi. I'm making f the subject. So f is going to be omega, which is 7.5 divided by 2 pi. So I'll press my calculator. So this is giving me 1.2 hertz. So that is the frequency, then to find the period, I know that period is equal to one over frequency, so I just get one divided by the answer. So this is 0 0.84 hertz, so that is uh, the period. Then find the displacement when t is equal to 0 0.50 seconds. So we want to find the period displacement. So using the same equation, x is going to be equal to 0. Point so this is part B, x is going to be 0 0.25 cos, where there is seven, uh, this is going to be 7.5, but they said t is 0 0.5. So your time should be, your, your um, because this is in radians per second, your, your calculator should be in radians. So I'll say x 0 0.25 cos of 7.5 times 0 0.5. So here x is going to be equal to negative 0 0.21 meters. Remember to make sure that your calculator is in radians because these values are very, these angles are very small and they are measured in radians. So when you're finding x, you should turn your calculator into radians. Okay. Example number four, a pendulum oscillates with a frequency 1.5 hertz and amplitude, so this is f, Amplitude is 0 0.10 meters, so this is x naught. If it is passing through its equilibrium position when t equals to zero, at t equals to zero, it is passing equilibrium. That means the solution is x equals to x naught sine omega t. Because at t equals to zero, it is passing equilibrium. So x should be equal to x naught sine omega t. Because equilibrium, x should be zero. Write an equation to represent the displacement. Write an equation to represent the displacement 
um, x in terms of amplitude x naught, angular frequency omega, and time t. Determine its displacement when t is equal to 0 0.5. So of course, um, of course, we now know that x should be equal to x naught sine omega t because timing started when t equals to zero, it was passing equilibrium. It can't be cos. All we need is to substitute x naught and omega. So x naught is 0 0.1, zero meters, and omega, omega is equal to two pi f. So this is going to be two pi times f, which is 1.5. And this becomes, I think this becomes 3 pi radians per second. So I can write x as being equal to where there is omega. Where there is omega, okay, they wanted it in terms of x naught and omega, and I've already written that. But if we want to substitute, because in the second part, we want to determine the displacement when t equals 0 0.5. So x is going to be 0 0.1, 0 sine. Where there is omega, I'll put to 3 pi times t. So x is going to be equal to 0 0.10 sine 3 pi. And they said t is 0 0.5, so this is 0 0.5. Remember to put your calculator in radians. So my calculator is in radians. So from my calculator, x is equal to negative 0 0.10 meters. So it is actually at maximum displacement, the other side. Of course, the minus here, the minus means that it is at negative, or it is on the left hand end, assuming we started from the, post, the right hand side. So it, if we assume that we chose to consider displacement to the right positive, the minus is indicating the displacement is negative, it is on the left hand side. So that is uh, the significance of the minus. Remember to put your calculator in radians when you are dealing with such questions. Okay. Example five. The pendulum of a grandfather clock, the pendulum of grandfather clock swings from one side to the other in 1.0 seconds. The amplitude of the oscillation is 12 centimeters. So this is X naught. Um, it swings from one side to the other to the other in 1.0 seconds. So this is half a period. Half of a period because it swings. Uh, if it is swinging, let's say it is swinging from this side to the other side. That is half a cycle. It swings from one side to the other in one second. So that's half a cycle. So that means if it goes back, it should be two seconds. So the period is going to be two. What is given here is from one side to the other side, which is half a cycle. So the period is going to be two seconds. So uh, calculate the period of motion. So the period is going to be two times 1.0, which is 2.0 seconds, because they gave us half a cycle. Then frequency, we know frequency is 1 over period. So frequency is 1 over 2, which is going to be 0 0.5 hertz. Angular frequency omega is 2 pi over t, which is 2 pi f. We just substitute 2 pi times 0 0.5, which is pi radians. Write an equation of the form A equals negative omega squared x to show how the acceleration of the pendulum depends on its displacement. How the acceleration of the pendulum depends on its displacement, we just substitute with uh, where there is omega, we put the value of omega, which is pi radians. So it is either pi squared or it is 9.8. If we square 3.14 radians per second, I think this is easy. Then um, calculate the maximum speed of the pendulum, the pendulum bob. Remember, speed is maximum when x equals to zero. So maximum speed is equal to omega times x naught, which is omega is 
uh, what is omega? Omega is pi radians, and x naught is 12 centimeters, which is 0 0.12. So this is going to be 3.14 times 0.12. For my calculator, 3.14 times 0.12. So this is 0 0.3768 meters per second. I think this is going to be correct. If I multiply this by 100, it becomes 37.68. So this is approximately correct. Then um, the speed of the bulb when its displacement is 6 centimeters. So I have to go back to the original equation, V equals to plus or minus omega square root of x naught squared minus x squared. This is going to be omega is 3.14 square root of x naught is, um, I will use standard units. So x naught is going to be 0 0.12, but it is squared minus x, which is 6 centimeters, that is 0 0.06 squared. So 0 0.12 squared minus 0 0.06 squared square root and times 3.14. So this is giving me 0 0.32.6. So 0 0.326 meters per second, which is the same as 32.6 centimeters per second okay, so that is example number five a troll is at rest tethered between two springs it is pulled 0 0.15 meters to one side and when t equals to zero it is released so it is it is this is going to be the maximum displacement so t is equal to 0 when x is 0 0.15. So t is equal to 0 when x is at maximum displacement. It is released so that it oscillates back and forth with the simple harmonic motion. The period of its motion is this. So this is t is 2.0 seconds. Write an equation for its displacement x at any time t, assuming that when motion is not damped, that the motion is not damped by frictional forces. So because... Um, Timing is starting when it is at maximum displacement. The equation is going to be x equals to x naught cos omega t because it's only cos which gives x as x naught when t is zero. So our task is to substitute x naught and omega. So we know that omega is equal to 2 pi over t. So omega is going to be 2 pi divided by 2, which is going to be pi radians per second. So I just substitute these quantities in this equation, so it becomes x equals to where there is x naught, I'll put there 0 0.15. Of course, where there is pi, where there is omega, I'll put pi times t. So this is going to be the equation. Then sketch a displacement time graph to show two cycles of the motion. Give values where appropriate. Okay, I'll try to sketch this. So it is a graph of displacement against time. So displacement is a vector quantity, but time is a scalar quantity. So for time, I'll only have the positive axis. For displacement, I'll have both positive and negative. So let's say t displacement is 0 times 0. I'll have maximum displacement is going to be positive 0 0.15 and then negative 0 0.15 at the bottom. Then the period, remember, is 2 seconds. So I will divide 2 seconds into two four parts, into 4 parts. So this is a 0 0.5. This is going to be 1.0, 1.5, and 2.0. But I said 2 cycles, so I will add more. So plus 0 0.5, we shall have 2.5. Uh, we have 3.0, we have 3.5, and we have 4.0. So um, the next thing is now to just substitute in that equation. 
when t equals to 0, x is going to be 0 0.515. So the graph starts from there. Let me change the color. So the graph starts from there. So when t equals to a quarter a cycle, that is 0 0.5. You can put in the calculator pi over 2. 0 0.5 is a half. So pi over 2. Cos of pi over 2 is 0. Cos of 90 is 0. So the graph goes there. When t equals to 1, cos of pi, cos of pi is negative negative 1. So this takes us to negative 0 0.15. So the graph goes there. So the pattern just continues like that. So it will just move like this. Right. So this goes to zero maximum, back to zero maximum, back to zero. So this one is a mistake, I think. So zero maximum zero maximum down here zero maximum is here so it continues like this so I think it stops there after one complete cycle it should be here so that is just a sketch you can draw you can draw something better it is just substituting this equation here the values of t and then you check with your calculator. Okay, so the graph will look like that. So here is a self-check, having done um, all these questions, examples for you. It's now time for you to check yourself. You can always pause the video and you try to work out to see if you can recall the basic concepts that we have explored. A mass secured at end of a spring moves with a simple harmonic motion. The frequency of its motion is 1.4 hertz. Write an equation of the form A equals to negative omega squared x to show how the acceleration of the mass depends on its displacement. Then calculate, so here we just find omega. Calculate the acceleration of the mass when its displacement is 0 0.050 meters from its equilibrium position. So this is just x. Remember, acceleration is the direct proportion to displacement, so you just substitute the value of x. A short pendulum mostly with a simple harmonic motion such that it accelerates its acceleration in A in meters per second is related to the displacement in meters by the equation A is equal to negative 300x. Determine the frequency of the solution. So we just, com we just compare with A equals negative omega squared x. And remembering that omega is 2 pi times f, we just find f. An atom in a crystal vibrates with a simple harmonic motion with a frequency of 10 to the power of 14 hertz. The amplitude of, the, its, of its motion is 2.0 times 10 to the power of minus 12 meters. So this is x naught. Sketch a graph to show how the displacement of the atom varies during one cycle. So it is, we can say displacement against, uh, against time varies during one cycle, because for one cycle we shall be considering time. So first of all, you use the frequency to find the period. T equals to 1 over F. Then you can divide the time, the, the period, into four quarters. And you just sketch the graph like we have done in the previous example. And lastly, question number four, uh, on... An object with simple harmonic motion goes through two complete cycles in one second. So here you find the period. One, uh, two cycles, that is one second. So period is going to be the time of one divided by two cycles. So it is 0.5. Then frequency is the reciprocal. Angular frequencies, uh, this is 2 pi times f. A mass oscillating on a, sim on a spring has amplitude of 0 0.10 meters and a period of 2.0 seconds. Use the equation for the displacement x if timing starts at the instant when the mass has its maximum displacement. So, 
This equation is automatically going to be x because at t equals to zero, the body is at maximum displacement, that is cos. Then calculate the time interval from t equals to zero before the displacement is 0 0.08. Remember, your, your, your calculator should be in, in radians. And I think lesson one should stop at that point.